Hi everybody, Billy again. So uh, in this short lecture, we want to just get an overview of um, what's the difference between chapter 3 and chapter 4. Really chapter 4 is only about getting extra equations to determine the overall stoichiometry. So it's just a bit of an addition. We do some extra work uh, in able for, 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 for us to be, to be able to get more stoichiometric relationships. So let's get on. So what we have in this example of 4.3 is just uh, growing biomass from glucose. So we have glucose, we need, it's an oxidative process, we need oxygen, uh, we also feed some ammonia, and uh, what ends up is biomass, there's some CO2 that forms, and there's also some water that forms. So by now you will know that it's all about determining these stoichiometric relationships okay the little white blocks in front of the overall equation that's what it's all about so one way of writing is writing it out is just to say this can be represented by the rates of all the components okay and very important the rate of biomass formation we call it rx but it's also equal to mu this will typically be used as the basis in when we do the chapter four type of analysis in order to obtain stoichiometric relationships. So to simplify um, this expression where we have six components, we can say we're not going to do a separate um, hydrogen and oxygen balance. So we're going to do a degree of reduction balance. And if we do a degree of reduction balance, we can get rid of water. So that's one component that we can get rid of. And then also we can skip the nitrogen balance because you will see because the uh, degree of reduction of ammonia is zero, the only thing that the nitrogen balance do is to actually calculate the amount of ammonia that we use. So we can now skip this and just say we know what the degree of reduction of biomass is. The degree of reduction of biomass for the standard formula is 4.2. So um, we'll include the nitrogen in here and we won't calculate the ammonia. And this is only, we only do this to show how uh, the elemental balance of chapter three compares to the flux model of chapter four. So I'm just gonna get rid of this. So effectively, I am reducing my equation to the following, okay? And uh, I just wanna get rid of all these equations, okay? So, so here I have my overall equation. Now in chapter 3, and um, before we go on, I just want to write this out. So in chapter 3 is really all about elemental balances. Um, and chapter 4 will be all about flux models. We call them flux models because we have a look at the internal distribution of the breakdown of glucose. So um, both these will end up with matrix formulations. It's all linear expressions. So what we will have in um, the elemental chapter three balances is effectively four equations to solve for the four unknown rates. Okay, we always start with the carbon balance. So we have a carbon balance. I'm not gonna write numbers. Um, then we'll have the degree of reduction balance, um, which you know how to do. We excluded water, you remember that. And then, of course, we're always going to define a basis. So the basis will typically be the biomass. Um, and additionally, you've seen this in tutorial two, and um, you, you know that because we only have these three equations, we need a fourth equation. So this will be a specification. Specification, that's another equation. And uh, then we end up with a square matrix. If I say square, it's four by four. So the same amount of equations than, that, than what we have unknown rates for, because remember, we're solving for rates. And now given this, we can solve for the solution. If we go over to chapter four, where we talk about the flux models, you will see in this chapter, um, this chapter is now 4.3 I'm talking about, that we start out with a pretty massive matrix. I think it's a nine by nine matrix. Okay. Now the first thing to note is that the carbon distribution 
is modeled in detail. So there's really, you can almost say there's a lot of carbon balances because we follow the C mole carbon flux through the cell. So instead of having one carbon balance, we have like a lot of carbon splits, a lot of carbon stoichiometric ratios. So there's numerous, those first set, those first equations is really just carbon equations where you specify stoichiometry and splits. And then after you do this, you have you also have the degree of reduction balance. Now the degree of reduction balance is called the NADH balance, so that's really the same thing. And um, this is really just to distribute electrons plucked off and electrons added in various pathways. Okay, interesting, you can try and do an overall, if I say overall I'm talking just about the excretion products, you can try and do an overall degree of reduction balance, try and replace it by the NADH balance and see if you get the same thing. Okay, then we also have in our flux model the basis. Okay, we always define the basis, that will typically be that mu specification in the constant array. And then, very important, we have the ATP balance, which is a new balance. The ATP balance is a function of all the carbon splits, okay? So, unfortunately, ATP can't be defined just on excretion and entry um, components. And that's really the reason why we do this massive carbon breakdown, um, is to relate the ATP sections in the carbon breakdown so that we have another fundamental equation. Okay, so just to give you some perspective, let's do some marking. So we can, for example, have a look at the carbon balance in the chapter 3 mode. That will be over here. While in the chapter 4, or the flux model mode, we will have numerous carbon balances. Okay, degree of reduction balance. We call it a degree of reduction balance um, when we do the chapter, fee, the chapter 3 equivalent. But uh, the NADH balance really represents exactly the same thing. It's really the electron distribution or the redox implications of all the reactions. And then the basis, of course, will be the same for both. So we have the same basis over here. We just specify the rates. You've seen it. We've done it before. And then there's a difference because on the chapter 3 side, we had a specification. Okay. And you've seen that on the chapter 4 side, where we do the flux model, there's no specification. We get another fundamental equation in the ATP balance. Okay, so what does, the, th what does this mean? Well, it's really just the red, which was something that we need to know. It's now replaced by the blue, which is a fundamental equation. And now we can solve for four unknowns. Remember, we're just talking about excretion and entry um, components. We can now solve for all the rates over the boundaries of the cell without having any specification. We just have a ATP balance that's got added. And that's really, the, the ATP balance is, is the core of chapter 4 because it's another additional equation that we specify. You will see, if you have a look at the fermentative pathways in 4.2, that some of these stoichiometric relationships might be such that it also gives you more um, equations. Okay, if you have a close look at uh, um, chapter chapter 4.2, you will see that uh, um, that we actually ended up with three more equations in the flux model than what we did in the elemental balance. Okay, so that's really because of stoichiometries that are that were specified in the pathways that is not always known when you do the overall balance. Okay, so it's not just it's not necessarily just one, you always get one, that's the ATP balance, but they, especially for anaerobic systems, there might be a lot of extra equations that you can also get because the extended carbon balances now contains stoichiometric relationships. Okay, so what it boils down to, and, and this is it, is that the flux model gives you more prediction capability in terms of predicting all the rates. Okay, and... Um, it can be one, or it can be more than one equation that you obtain. So the last thing before we end, you will always see when I do a flux model in the 4.2 and 4.3 sections, I say, let's check for mass balance consistency. So basically, if you want to check if you've made a mistake here, it's very easy just to quickly set up the elemental balance. You will use 
some of the answers that you got from this model as specifications in this model. But as soon as these two give you the same answers, you, you are very comfortable because you know you have a mass balance consistency and you don't have to check all those coefficients over and over again. Okay, that's it for today.